Good morning, Deify here, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo, where even after our wonderful day out with Hanako, she is still missing from class, and I guess now we are trying to figure out why. And, uh, you know, it's a question that's been bugging Hisao this entire time. Why is Hanako always missing from class? Well, let's just jump in and see if we can figure it out. I stand outside of the door to Hanako's room, hoping that she isn't in too much of a state as I nervously clutch the worksheets Muto asked me to pass on to her. It's one more reason to visit her, and it gives me something to talk about, so I suppose I should be thankful to him for giving me the task. With a long breath, I steady myself. Or, to steady myself, I wrap my knuckles on the door in front of me. Silence. I listen intently for any sounds of shuffling coming from inside but I can't hear a thing. I knock on the door again, slightly harder. Still no answer. How strange. Scratching my head, I make one last attempt at getting her to answer as I knock on the door one final time. Hanako, it's just me. Muto said to give you some stuff. For a while, the attempt seems just as unsuccessful as the last. Just before I slip the sheets under her door, though, I hear the handle rattling. As the door opens halfway, I quickly try to see how Hanukkah is faring. It's a task made somewhat more difficult by her oversized gown hiding so much of her body. I don't know why you gotta see her body to know that. She doesn't look sick, or at least not immediately so. To be honest, I'd have preferred that to her expression right now. She looks terribly tired, and appears to be barely acknowledging my presence. Hi, Hanako. Muto wanted me to give you these since you weren't in class today. I hold out the loose sheets, which she tentatively takes in her hands. The way she moves is devoid of thought. Her posture is slumped in an unusual manner for someone that's so often tense and wound up. Even her eyes keep looking away from mine, doing their best to avoid eye contact. I move my head a little to try and get a better look, but she just ends up turning away. Are you okay? If you're feeling sick or anything, I could go get a nurse feels almost pitiful to put on such a routine get-well-soon act. Can't think of anything else I could possibly do for her, though. She seems to collect herself a little at the notion, but only a little. Her head remains turned away, but her eyes move towards me. I'm fine. An awkward silence follows. As it lingers, I notice that the sleeves and cuffs of her gown bear slightly damp stains. Her cheeks are a bit red, too. Has she been crying? I see. I hesitate a little before coming out with the words I really came here to say. Would you like me to stay? I don't have anything urgent to do at the moment, so it wouldn't be any trouble. Her eyes slide away from me, and I lose any hope for an improvement of her mood. I wait for a response, but she doesn't say anything, nor give any kind of gesture. She just stands there, looking away from me. Hanako? She slowly shakes her head. Okay, um, good night, then. With that, Hanako steps back and closes her door without a second word. More than a little worried, I retreat back to my room. Wandering up the hallway, I keep mulling over what happened. It felt like Hanako was only half there, as if I was interacting with a robot that was just doing what it was programmed to without any real thought. She was a husk of a person. Oh, this is frustrating. I had hoped that meeting Hanukkah would help the situation, but I feel like it's only made it harder to understand her. How am I supposed to try and help her when she quite literally shuts me out like that? I don't even bother to turn on the light, opting instead to simply change into my pajamas, quickly choke down my evening pills, and collapse onto my bed. We haven't talked about the evening pills in a while, I'm glad you're keeping up with your medication, he sow. This is how you survive, so please... Keep on doing that. I don't think this story would go too well if you were to just randomly drop dead somewhere, alright? Once again, Hanako doesn't turn up for class. Try as I might to concentrate on other matters, this fact continues to distract me throughout the entire school day, and even as I walk through the school gardens to the dormitories. I don't think today being her birthday is a coincidence either. I don't know the link between the two events though, nor do I have any idea on what she's feeling. Were it physical pain, I could at least provide some limited comfort. With something like this, though, I have no idea where to start. I run the people I know through my head, thinking about whether they could help, 
Shizune and Misha don't know that much about Hanako, and what little they do know, they can't tell me. Same for the nurse. In the end, there's only one person that knows Hanako well and would be willing to tell me anything. Entering my dormitory room, whew, glad school's over already, I don't want to sit through that even in a visual novel. I notice something that takes me off guard. It's starting to seem familiar. With everything that's going on around me, I'm thankful that this room started to finally be somewhere I can relax a little. When I'd first entered Yamaku, it felt immediately foreign in every way, from the untouched neat neatness to the way it smelled. Yeah, that was weird with dorms. It took me like a week, like once I got my computer all set up and whatnot, then I was like, alright, feeling a little bit better about this, but uh, man, before that it's like, Ooh, I have to sleep here? But nah, but this is a weird place. Focusing back on the task at hand, I throw my bag onto the bed as I open the top drawer of my desk. Before she left, Lily told me the number to call her on while in Scotland, and I wrote it down. In hindsight, I wonder if she knew something like this could happen. Now that she's out of reach, I realize just how much both Hanako and I have relied on her for guidance. I dig around drawer after drawer, looking for that damned piece of paper. Eventually, thankfully, I find it nestled under a borrowed book from the library. I probably should have just entered it directly into my cell phone, come to think of it. Without further ado, I enter the numbers and anxiously press the call button. Eventually, the phone picks up, a feminine voice I don't recognize on the other end. It's probably Lily's mother. <laughs> English? Yep, that's what English sounds like, you heard it here first. <laughs> Suddenly, finding myself unprepared, I realized I can't understand a word she says, either due to my limited vocabulary or her heavy accent. I should have anticipated this, since according to Lily, her mother is a native Scot. I soldier on in the hopes that she must know some Japanese, considering it's her daughter's native language. Um, it's Hisao Nakai speaking. An enthusiastic sound of realization can be heard as she recognized the languages. My feeling of relief is immense. Ah, you must be one of Lily's friends from the school, correct? Even so, her accent means I have to concentrate to work out what she's saying. Uh, yeah, that's right. Pleased to speak to you, Mrs. Sato. It's so nice of her to find someone so polite. Lily, dear, it's for you. I probably could have tried to put on a Scott accent right there, but oof. Let's not try and go down that road. That would be embarrassing. Her mother seems nice, if a little overenthusiastic given the mundane situation. There's a small silence as Lily takes her time getting to the phone. In the distance, I can just make out her mother scolding her playfully for just getting up. Hello, Lily speaking. You sound awful. She makes a sound somewhere between a dying animal and a yawn. <laughs> the one thing I did remember to check before calling was the time zone. It'd be pretty late in the morning over there, so she really has no excuse. Not feeling well? Just tired. What time is it there? Late afternoon. School finished for the day not long ago. Hanako's not well, is she? That was quick. My assumption that she must have known something like this could happen seems to have been on the mark. How did you know? Because today is her birthday. I'd hoped she might have gotten at least a little better after coming to know you, but... How is she right now? She missed school today, and yesterday. I still have to check up on her today. To be honest, after seeing how she was when I talked to her yesterday, I'm pretty anxious. I really have no idea what to make of it. Has this happened in the past? Is it related to her scarring in some way? Unfortunately so. Roughly the same thing happened last year when her birthday came up. As far as I can tell, it's because her parents died in the accident that caused her scarring, and Hanako blames herself for their deaths. What she says does seem to make sense. If she's blaming herself on her birthday, she may well be ruining that she was ever born. Didn't Lily already tell you that? Hanako had mentioned her stay in the orphanage to me. Maybe I should take some heart that she trusts me enough to tell me such a thing. Lily seeming so in the dark about it, though, almost to the extent that I am, is a surprise. So, that's why she lives in the student dormitories as well? Has she told you any more about the accident? As close as we've come, 
She's very barely told me anything about what happened. What I know about it is largely, largely conjecture. She sounds depressed, almost defeated. Considering the trauma Hanako must have gone through, I really can't fault Lily for not knowing. Nevertheless, she still seems to consider it a personal failing. Don't blame yourself, Lily. With everything she's gone through... There's a long silence from the un other end of the line. I begin to wonder if the call cut out before the voice at the other end speaks once again. There is another person, though, that has been a subject of worry for me as of late. Oh? I run through the people she could be talking about in my head. The only friends she seemed to keep very close are Hanako and me, though there is Akira as well. That person is you, Hisao. There's another silence on the line, but this time it's caused by me. Making others worry about me is something I've very actively tried to avoid since coming to Yamaku. Indeed, even my interaction with Hanako has helped stave off any major health problems thanks to our relaxed and th slow-paced lives. Ah. Uh... Huh. What is there to worry about over me? I apologize. I didn't mean any offense. Sorry, I was just taken a bit off guard. Still, isn't Hanako a bigger problem at the moment? For some time now, I've thought that you both of you may be feeding into each other's more worrying habits. I tried to amend this before leaving, but it seems to have done little. Worrying habits? When I asked you about what you had in mind for the future, your answer was very similar to what Hanako has said in the past when that question was posed to her. It's well and good that you want to protect her, but I fear that treating Hanako like this, as if she were a daughter or someone in need of special care, is only going to achieve the opposite. The situation got effectively turned on its head. After everything that's happened, this is the first time I find myself doubting Lily's judgment. Alright, well... We gotta create a new save state there, and I believe we have one save state for every choice we have come up across right there. Oh man, oh man. This is a rough one. Do we uh, agree with Lily that maybe we're not doing the best for Hanako right now, or do we just go with ourselves and uh, pester Hanako some more? Well, I mean, quite frankly, our pestering Hanako hasn't really done anything, and as Einstein says, insanity is trying the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Maybe we should just listen to Lily at this time. I mean, she's pretty intuitive. She says Hanako and I are similar. Now let's give it a shot. All right, let's uh, try this again. My recording gave out, so that's super cool. I'm going to go back to the far away presence choice. Uh, strangely, we're going to agree with Lily again. I don't know why, my recording just stopped. It just wasn't moving. It's like, okay, that's real cool. So uh, I guess we'll just try and do the all this again. I know I read the first couple lines in the recording, but hey, let's uh, go for it. Uh, I don't want to admit it, but she may have a point. Something else bugs me, though. And you tried to amend this. Wait, are outing into the city? Quite astute. I thought that it might help if I dragged both of you out of Yamaku and into the wider world. I am thankful you became closer for it, though. So, she noticed that. I suppose she may well have been paying attention to us, and her hearing's incredibly good. Quite likely good enough to have picked up what we were talking about if she tried. This sounds more and more like you were manipulating us. Silence. It's a harsh way of putting it, but I have no intention of stepping back from those words. I'm sorry. I was just worried about you. It's fine. I guess there are more important things anyway. Let's please not attack Lily. <laughs> Don't attack Lily. She's so kind. You can't do this. It's not a total surprise that she'd do such a thing. Her motherly nature can be slightly overbearing at times. But she does have the best of intentions. So, you think I should think more about myself instead of trying to cater to Hanako? That largely sums it up. Again, I'm sorry for not telling you this in a clearer way before going behind your back. I know I am at least as guilty of being overprotective of Hanako as you, 
but I fear that you are neglecting yourself in your efforts to give Hanako happiness. Do you really think Hanako will be okay? She isn't as fragile as you think. I don't know exactly what experiences she's lived through, or what feelings she has in her mind, but she has managed to work her way through them until now. It's also my hope that giving her a little space will allow her to decide what she truly wants for herself, and give her the initiative to reach out for it. Please, have faith in Hanako. That's all I ask. Uh, I guess I'll think about it for a while. That's good. Being rash won't get you anywhere. I know that at times you may doubt your relationship to Hanako, but she does... Lily cuts herself off and takes a moment to reconsider her words. Please keep in mind that I wouldn't have befriended you if I hadn't thought you a fundamentally good person. You're a good friend, both to myself and to Hanako. Thank you. That helps. We share some small talk to try and lighten the atmosphere, but it feels very stilted. There's a lot I don't know about Lily's stay in Scotland. But after such a heavy subject, I don't want to be alone for a bit to think. After a few minutes, we end up saying our goodbyes, and I set my phone on my desk. Compared to Hanako's situation, mine feels utterly mundane. I still have both my parents, I had a reasonably normal childhood, and unlike Minnie and Yamaku, my condition isn't immediately visible to the public. But then again, isn't this just an attempt to justify the way I've been acting towards her? That may well be what our pasts were like, but when it comes to the future, I still have no idea what I want to do. In school, I've just concentrated on each day's work, and I've put off more and more things to cater to Hanako. I recall the words Muto told me after Hanako's breakdown, about the purpose of Yamaku and my education. In hindsight, he was probably trying to push exactly the same thing. Just what have I been doing in the time since my heart attack? If I ever did manage to get Hanako out of her room and to open up, what then? I look out my dormitory window as the sun slowly sets. It's a nice sight, but what I really savor is the quiet as the students return to their dormitory rooms. All I want to do now is think. I'm not sure how much time I have, but I want to work out where I'll go from here. Alright, so, well, I guess that's that day. We're just leaving Hanako to fend for herself. She's done it before! She's still with us, and Lily said last year was similar, so hopefully that's the right choice. Since talking to Lily yesterday, I've wanted to try and move on from the listlessness I've felt since coming to Yamaku. But even if I try to concentrate on the book in front of me, Hanako's empty seat at the back of the classroom looms larger than life. Every time I start getting focused, my eyes flick over to her desk again, and my mind starts spinning. Yes! Miki's here! <laughs> Once more, my eyes drift over to it, but this time, my vision is blocked by a certain other classmate. Oh. Hey, Miki. Maybe you should just have lunch. I can hear your stomach growling from my desk. I let my head drop in disappointment. She seems to take some amusement from my reaction and hops up onto my desk. Her grin as she sits on it reminds me of the Cheshire Cat. So, what you working on? Some math... I have a decent handle on it, but I just wanted to revise. Oh, really? Let me see that. Before I can object, she grabs my mathematics book with her hand. She scans the page I was on, holding it open with the one hand she has, her left arm sitting uselessly on her lap. In my time here at Yamaku, I've noticed that the other students have a wide range of adjustments to their disabilities on a purely practical level. Miki is one of those who seems to have some trouble. The stump of her left arm tends to be either hanging by her side, slipped into a pocket, or otherwise put out of the way. Sometimes she has a difficult time doing common tasks, which makes her visibly quite frustrated. I feel a little bad for thinking this way, but I'm thankful that Hanako and I don't have disabilities affecting our freedom of movement to that extent. Then again, if Miki's problem worsened, at least she wouldn't have a real possibility of dying. My attention is refocused as she thumbs through the, uh, a few pages, skimming their contents. With such casual interest in the subject matter, it's clear by now she won't be any help. 
I'm guessing you're not too interested in that stuff. <laughs> Screw math, it's boring as hell. She puts the book back in front of me with indifference. Her eyes move to the notebook beside it that I'd been working out practice equations on. Wait, you're actually able to work that stuff out? Yeah? Wow, I've never talked to a computer with legs before. Thanks. I think. At least I'm doing better in this than history. I think it's worth a oh wait. Think it's worth asking that librarian for help? I heard she's shooting for uni. Ah, uh, Yuko? Maybe. I don't know what she wants to study though. So what about you? Got anything you're thinking of doing after you graduate? Me? Nah, not really. Just enjoying it while it lasts. She looks a little awkward when asked about her future, and absentmindedly rubs her left forearm. Kind of want to ask her about it. But I don't think I know her well enough to do so. The conversation peters out, and I lean back in my chair, giving up on the prospect of studying. Miki notices my tired expression, and looks oddly serious. Thinking about Hanako? Is that obvious? You've been glancing at her seat, and you've been pretty quiet. Not too hard to connect the dots. I'm just worried about her. Yeah, I can see why you would be. She can get... Weird sometimes. She sounds put off, but I can't blame her. Hanukkah was a hard person to interact with before she warmed up to me, even with Lily around to help. I haven't known her for that long either, so some of her habits would still be unknown to me. My face becomes troubled. If I hadn't developed feelings for her, this would be at least a little easier to deal with. Ah, I mean, no offense. She isn't a bad person, I know that much. I know, I didn't take it that way. It's just harder to deal with when, well, you know, you have feelings for someone. Yeah, I can imagine that. It's hard to forget something like what happened to her during class, too. I wish she hadn't reminded me of that. She just confirmed that it was clearly noticed by others in the room as well. Come on, don't get that down. She's done this before, you just gotta wait it out. She locks herself in her room and acts like an empty husk of a person for a sizable amount of time, ever since she entered Yamaku, if not before then as well. And I'm not supposed to be concerned about that? Well, I might think that. But there's nothing that I can do. I can't force her to come out, and she does see a therapist, so it's not like she isn't getting any help for her issues. Maybe it's natural to think that way when you're so powerless to help someone. It's just the way she is, and you just have to deal with it. As I mull things over, I notice a movement out of the corner of my eye, I glance to see who it is, and end up doing a double take. It's Muto and a black leotard. Oh no, we're fine, okay. Wow, sure enough, it's Hanako. She walks through the door, just as she would any normal school day, and begins to move towards her, begins to move towards her seat in her usual silent and humble manner. She looks at me for a moment, before blushing and looking away in embarrassment. Which makes me realize that I was staring at her. I feel sorry for that. But not doing it is hard after all that's happened. The girl sitting on my desk looks to me, grinning. See? Your sweetheart's back already. What did I tell ya? Oh, you be quiet. Might only be meant as a joke, but she hits close enough to make me quite uncomfortable. As we talk, someone calls Miki's name from the door. She jumps down from her vantage point on my desk before turning to me. Gotta go, Hisao. Remember to eat sometime, will ya? Fine, fine, I will. See ya. She gives a casual salute before jogging over to the door where a male student in gym uniform is waiting for her. Probably someone from the track and field club. Seizing the opportunity, I get up and make my way to Hanako's desk. H hello Hey, Hanako. What's up? N nothing. Maybe talking to her this soon after she came back to class was a bad move. Wanna go come with me and grab something from the cafeteria? Pretty hungry. But... I thought you were studying. Studying can wait. Turning up for class after all this time must have taken some courage for Hanako, so the least I can do is stay with her. That's just the way she is, and you just have to deal with it, is the way Miki, and probably the class as a whole, views Hanako. 
I can do more for her, though. I want to do more for her. After being distracted by Miki, I don't think I'm going to get any work done. Come on, let's go. She hesitates, but eventually gets up and joins me as we begin walking. These may be small steps for her, but the fact that she's finally out of her room, of her own volition, lifts a large weight off my shoulders. Oh, we're just ending that day? Alright, who needs to actually deal with lunch with Annika? We've had enough of those, you all know how it goes down. My pen br- <laughs> English is hard, I should just do this all in Japanese. <laughs> my pen busily scrawls onto a slowly filling page of my notebook. My other hand remains on the page of a reference book I borrowed from the library, marking my spot as my eyes flicker to and fro. As I work, I occasionally mark red circles or underlines onto the photocopied sheets of paper that lie on the table in front of me. Wanting a change of scenery from the library to avoid the distractions of the classroom, I decided to make use of the Shanghai for some quiet study time. It ended up being nice and quiet, as expected, and being able to get coffee while I study is a nice bonus. Hanako may have returned to her normal self since she came out of her room, but I've done quite the opposite. Daily routine may have turned. Daily routine may have returned to us, but I feel as if I'm a totally different person. Maybe I'm not. It's only been a few days, after all, since I decided I wanted to try and get out of the rut I'd found myself in after my accident. But I want to change. Now I'm actively working towards that goal, or at least I would like to think that I am. Ugh, this is impossible. Brute forcing this isn't going to work. I sit at my laptop, mindlessly typing in passwords, one after another. Hunter 2. Enter. Wrong password. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Enter. Wrong password. Oh, I can't hack this account! What's more, I have another piece of writing I have to do after this. I fear that's going to be no easier. Um... I look up in mild surprise to the source of the tentative voice. Yuko stands at the head of my table with a damp towel in hand, clearly having taken the opportunity to clean the tables while no other patrons were around. She looks curious, her eyes as much on my work as on me. What's the matter? I was just wondering, what sort of work are you having so much trouble with? Oh, it's just history. I'm fine with science and math, so I'm trying to get my other subjects to par. Yuko looks positively delighted at this development. I feel like I just chose the right answer on some big quiz show. Oh, I think I can help you with that. Um, if you don't mind, of course. Briefly consider turning down the offer in order to not cause her too much trouble, but she looks too excited about this for me to do it. It would mean to shoot her down like that after- Oh, it would be mean to shoot her down like that after such a reaction. If you're willing to help, I'd really appreciate it. She claps her hands together and quickly deposits her towel on the counter, before returning and taking a seat across from me. I take my notebook off the table of the textbook and hand it over for her to peruse. So, you're studying the Edo period. Yeah, I'm not really much good at this, though. She takes the textbook and reads a few pages from a random section near the middle for a bit, but the aura of enthusiasm she'd been radiating previously is rapidly sapping away. I'm guessing this isn't the kind of history you were expecting. Uh, unfortunately not. My main area is European history, especially in the classical era. Sorry. She looks a bit downcast, but as she carefully closes the book and lays it back down on the table, her face perks up again. Would you like another cup of coffee? Hmm? Oh, yeah, sure. I reach forward and get my book back as Yuko gets up takes my mug, and slowly walks to the counter to make another brew. As usual, she's absolutely silent as she does this. Every ounce of her concentration is focused on not tripping over or dropping the plain white mug. I take the opportunity to lay back and relax for a bit, the hum of the coffee machine filling the otherwise quiet air. It's small details like that which make me realize how much I've come to appreciate the little things in life. The peace and quiet of the local town, the discipline and order of Yamaku, the green of the trees that were so rare in my home city, the relaxed pace at which the aging residents lived their lives. Everything feels so... certain. It's comforting. I can feel myself beginning to nod off when the sound of the mug coming to rest on the table grabs my attention. 
Seems like it arrived not a moment too soon. Yuko takes her previously s her previous seat once again as I pick myself up and, and bring a hand around the mug to check its temperature. It's just a little too hot to drink right away, so I blow on it a little. It's a shame you don't like history all that much. I sort of guessed you might be more into science. How so? You've nearly read out the science fiction section of the library already. It wasn't hard to notice. You do have a good point there. Well, what can I say? You've pegged me just about right. You sound like you really take an interest in history, though, especially considering how specific you were about it. Do you study in that area or something? Go on digs overseas? She giggles nervously at the thought. I'd like to visit the Mediterranean sometime and see the old architecture and art for myself, but I don't think I could trust myself to handle such delicate things. I'm saving up to formally study it in university, although I read up on it whenever I have free time outside of work. So Miki was right about her university aspirations. Considering how she fares as a waitress, a more theoretical path may suit Yuko better. It's nice to hear that she has some ambitions, though, considering how hard she works. I nod. Take a careful sip of my coffee. Right now we're just talking about ambitions. Like, alright, I gotta be better. Hanako's gotta be better. Yuko's doing well. Miki's gotta get better. And Lily's doing well. It's like, alright, we got five people here who are doing various levels of good to not good. Okay, my recording's just randomly giving out, which is really unnerving. I think I noticed this one pretty quickly because I've been distracted. <sighs> Goodness. You know what? I'm just going to leave this episode here. I don't know what's going on with my uh, setup right now, but let's not risk it. I've got a 32-minute video or so. Let's not push it any further. <laughs> I know it's a weird place to stop, but it looks like Hanukkah is just showing up, so... I'm going to leave this episode here. I'm supposed to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Until next time on Katawa Shoujo, goodbye.